Hi, this is Scott Bradfield, the Master Bay. They were trying a new theme song here. You all know this song. It's classical gas. We're, we're inaugurating a new, because uh, we don't have enough themes on this show. Classical gas is our new theme. And we're going to talk about classics in the bathtub. So that's our theme song. And I grew up listening to this song. I like it. And i got to figure out how to turn it off. See, once I start playing a good theme song, I really just, I realized people would much rather listen to that. We're going to talk about classics that you think you probably don't want to read in the bathtub, but even though they're classics, they're still really good in the bathtub. This is uh, Joseph Conrad, who is really, really good in the bathtub. He's kind of brilliant in the bathtub, especially The Secret Agent, which I just, I read for the second time. I read it once millions of years ago, and uh I thought I'm not going to say too much about him because it's Thanksgiving and I just kind of, you know, I don't really have a lot to say about, about Joseph Conrad except that he was kind of brilliant and he was technically brilliant. He wasn't like Henry James or James Joyce, this kind of, you know, heady, brilliant, uh, super clever person. He was super clever, but he knew how to tell a story and he seemed to write brilliant commercial fiction. He really, if you love Graham Greene, uh, we're going to do, we're definitely going to do an all bathtub uh, Hall of Fame with Graham Greene, who is is definitely one of my all-time favorites uh, to read. Um, then if you like Graham Greene, then you will probably love The Secret Agent because you can really see how big an influence this book was on Greene. He learned so much from it. I'm constantly trying to get my students to stop, you know, especially my really stupid students, to stop talking about, you know, omniscient points of view and all that horse shit. Um, what this guy does is he knows how to shift points of view and he knows how to shift time. And he does everything kind of technically in a superlative way. Uh, so what we really have in the, uh, the... I don't want to give away too many of the spoilers because it is quite a surprising book, even the second time through. We have a kind of a secret agent who's basically an agent provocateur in the early 20th century. It's based on the bombing of an anarchist, or quote anarchist, unquote, bombing of uh, Greenwich Observatory. And... Uh, this is about a guy who's named for a lock. He's a big fat guy who has a who works with a Liz, Liz who's married an English woman and he's probably from I forget or he's from Germany or East Europe or something. And he's come to England and he's been working for all these different spies and spy organizations so he probably doesn't know who he's really working for. But basically the people who run Britain want to uh, make people angry at the anarchists. It's like today, you know, everyone wants to get you mad at the at the immigrants, so they want to get you mad at unions. And, you know, basically, the people who are trying to get you mad at all these people are really stealing everything you have. You know, the Donald Trumps, they're just stealing everything from you. Well, they say, look, those people are coming over the border, taking your money. And then they steal everything from you. And, the you know, it, it's the same old age old uh, game. So it starts off with this guy named Verloc, who's, um, who's told to, to set off a bomb. And we shift points of view. So we shift points of view from Verloc to some of his confederates. We have some conversations between him and the various anarchists, some of whom are uh, anarchists, some of whom are this or that. But basically, we're in the head of that person. We even eventually, there's a, there's a kind of a, the wife's brother is, is, uh, is, is not all there. And he spends all his time drawing circles. And we move forward in time until actually a bomb goes off in Greenwich and someone's blown to bits. And I don't want to tell you more than that because it is every scene is incredibly close to one point of view. Technically and stylistically, Conrad can just write beautiful sentences. He's really the opposite text stylistically of who we talked about last week, last episode, Seminar. He writes these incredibly complex, ornate, beautiful sentences. Green does the same thing that are artistic sentences. I'll read just a small passage. He really gets into the characters' heads and then helps describe them from inside their heads. He's talking about Verloc, who's this big, overweight man, and he says, um, and the ideas in every sentence, are there's an idea in every one. His idleness was not hygienic, but it suited him very well. He was in a manner devoted to it with a sort of inert fanaticism or perhaps rather with a fanatical inertness. Born of industrious parents for a life of toil, he had embraced indolence from an impulse as profound as an explicable and as imperious, as 
the impulse which directs a man's preference for one particular woman in a given thousand. He was too lazy even for a mere demagogue, for a workman orator, for a leader of labor. It was too much trouble. Now, I'm just in a small passage. Every sentence has these rhythms in them, and they're beautifully constructed. And even the narrative of the story, which is really, it's, a, it's sort of a page turner, even today. If you read, Vic, we're going to do more of Conrad. Victory is basically high noon. You can't put a victory down. And um, you tend to, most people, they throw Heart of Darkness at you at school, which is a brilliant book. But you get into all those complicated narratives within narratives within narratives, which is why the Academics like to teach it because you don't want to know what's going on. But when you read the, this, it's it's it requires attention, but it's much technically much more uh, lucid. It, it, it it's it's much more obviously a certain type of novel, and he helps create that sort of novel in many ways. I really think that he's a wonderful writer, and I don't want to say any more academic stuff about him except that you will really get a good read out of the secret. Uh, the Secret Agent, and most of Conrad, even even The Heart of Darkness is great. It's just a much more complicated, difficult book. Say a few more about some random thoughts here. Uh, I picked up, we don't talk about too many academics. And acad I kind of piss on academia. I'm sorry. It's my fault. Having been a bit of an academic myself over the years, I, I really hate what, people, what most academics teach in literature courses. But there were some good ones, and there have been some good ones. And Ian Watt wrote some really lovely, uh, lucid, uh, intelligent uh, essays about novels and novel writing. And this is a book of essays. I enjoyed some of the stuff he wrote about on in terms of Conrad. And I'm really enjoying reading through this book, which I had never read before. I've read a lot of Ian Watt, but his biography, it's kind of an intellectual biography of Conrad, is a good read in the bathtub. You know, it's particularly good if you want to read along with the early Conrad, which is what this covers. Uh, one last bit of information. Our friend Andy out in uh, Northern Ireland sent me a bathtub book he loved in the bathtub, and I just read this over the past uh, few days, The Maintenance of Headway by Magnus Mills. It's a book I would not have read normally, and I would say I enjoyed it. Uh, uh, Andy mentioned it in terms of, in, in the context of, of uh, Flann O'Brien, and I can sort of see the context. Flann O'Brien has these kind of over-intellectualized characters talking about crazy ideas endlessly. And this one is is a smaller frame, but the basic sen uh, sense of it is it's a bunch of bus drivers in London driving the big double-decker London buses, which I spent the past 30 years riding around London in. And it's about how they kind of philosophize the world through the job of driving the red buses. So that's quite unusual, and he really knows his material. He doesn't give you specific streets and names, but you do know when you're going down Oxford Street, and you do know when you're out in the suburbs a bit, and his character, when they go, what bridges they're going across. So even though he doesn't tell you, but Mills obviously has worked on the buses, and it's an interesting book. It's you really basically it's like a it's it's stylistically a little more like Simnon, very simple direct uh, sentences. Uh, it's mainly dialogue between these different bus drivers arguing, and they're talking about a conspiracy at work in the world of uh, the bus system, which is, which does sound a little like Flann O'Brien, which is that they're trying to control the the regular delivery of these buses. So anyway, they, I like this. Uh, this interesting Magnus Mills, living writer, uh, quite funny, quite comic, quite enjoyable, good holiday book. Um, and we'll be doing more Joseph Conrad, uh, kind of the opposite of Magnus Mills and uh, and uh, Simenon, that, but this very great beauty and complexity in every single sentence and the observations and the thoughts going through the characters' heads. Beautiful book. Okay, we'll see you soon. Have a great uh, holidays. Hope you don't have to go back to work too soon, and we'll see you soon. Happy bathing. Happy masturbating from the Master Bather.